Right. So um, as a landscape architect and working with SUDS, um, probably just taking more of a different view about their SUD, about SUDS integration. And with this sort of audience, I don't need to remind you what SUDS are all about. Sustainable drainage systems, a sequence of planted and constructed features designed to slow, slow down rainwater runoff by mimicking natural drainage. But not only that, the whole issue of water, whether it's too much or not enough, is really seen as one of the most critical factors affecting us, particularly by the Committee for Climate Change. So I think my starting point is, I don't think the issue of water management has been addressed sufficiently in the new model design codes. And the importance of that statement in terms of climate change, health and well-being, nature, all of these things that have become so important to us. And we see continually this yo-yoing between flooding and droughts, and then the consequent problems that, you know, in terms of health and well-being that we've seen over the last year. This is one way that we can start to rectify some of those things through what we do on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of our design. So um, having gone through this to just see where we sit, it's, it's interesting that SUDS come into the document under nature, which I thought was, was an interesting place for it to be. Um, and quite surprising, it took me a while to actually find that that's where it was lurking. But when we start to drill down into the documents and actually think about what it is, almost every, every plan, when you looked at it, showed the water that went through the towns and cities that are used to illustrate this document. Because naturally, historically, towns and cities were tended to be built on rivers or by the sea because the need to have both that mode of transport was a really important part of why, why they were sited there. But the consequence of that with the way that development has gone you know, over time and the changes in the climate means that these are the areas that are now most vulnerable to flooding. And the more that we develop on our suburbs, the more that we can intensify that problem as well. So the issue of flood risk has to be a major consideration in what we're doing in terms of considering all new development. And that filters down both through the existing, the potential proposed as we add on to that, and how we can actually mitigate it through our major water management measures, but actually, more importantly, through what we do every day on each new site that we're working on. So again, you know, looking at this next one, we're now, you know, we're now stuck in the open space provision. And there just seems to be this vision that. SUDS is in the main about what you do in a public open space with another bomb crater, otherwise known as a pond. You know, we, we are just so far away from what the concept of what it was intended to be to the way that we see it rolled out in most of the housing developments that go through planning at the moment. The answer at the moment is pipe to pond. That's actually just traditional drainage. That's nothing to do with SUDS. Now there's hope there, because you know, research has been done for DEFRA, looking at how we need to reframe what SUDs are all about. We know what we need to do. We know how we need to change the policies, but we're not there yet with doing it. So I see some hope for that. But we've got to see that roll out through the professions and through that wider understanding and through actually engaging with what it means to, to actually deliver integrated design. So then when we look at some of these diagrams, well, doesn't feature anywhere at all. Now you could say, no, because that's not what this is all about. We're looking at this bigger picture and it's probably tucked into that open space somewhere. But what about those streets? What about those houses? They've all got downpipes. They've all got hard surfaces. They've all got roads and footpaths. Where's that water going? And it's that what's going to cause the the localised flooding that's the bane of people's lives, that everyday low incidence of flooding that is non-selective about the people that it, that it damages and how additional sites and consequential effects and things that have not been thought through properly, not properly implemented, nobody's noticed that then cause the problems that we're getting in new build as much as in our existing housing and development areas. So here we go again, we're now back in nature again. Um, 
and we've actually got a good mention here. So suds and urban greening. Yes, of course, those two things can and do go hand in hand, but they don't have to, because if we think about what we should, where we should be starting from, we should be avoiding that water going anywhere at all. So the fact that, you know, slightly off piste, we're going to want to talk about um, rainwater harvesting, the reuse and management of water, it's a precious resource to use it better. But then what are we doing on our roofs? How are we going to actually save it on each site? And then we can start to talk about how we're going to manage what we haven't dealt with close to where it falls through all those other design interventions that we can and should be using really well and not the simplistic bomb cater ponds at the end of a pipe. So we now get to suds actually being talked about in some detail within the document. And there's that lovely little diagram and we've crammed them, not all of them in, where's my bioretention planters, can't see those, but we've got most of the other things in there. So that shows how not this is an example of how we can actually fit all this stuff in in a different way. This is the approach we should be taking in each of these little models that are here because we actually have to do it on everything all the time, everywhere. It's quite simple. It's about changing mindsets, understanding its potential, understanding how we can use it as part of integrated design and actually just getting on with it, really. So there we go. We've got these lovely little sections of all these different streets and different types of neighborhoods. Not, nothing in there. But actually, we can equally produce those examples that show exactly how you can actually integrate it within the streets as just something else that we do. And we can get those trees in there and we can get, they can sit in the suds as well. Why not? Ideal. Keeps them away from the buildings, keeps them contained and has the right function in terms of doing it. And we can take these up to every level of detail, design and density but we've got to have to be more creative and clearly we're going to use the permeable paving and all of these other techniques, but suds on the surface is where we need it to be. So, uh, and take it to a whole neighborhood, there you go. And it looks really complex, but it's actually no more complex if you think about a pipe system coming out of a building, it's just doing it in a completely different way. And that's where the need for real good um, interprofessional understanding from engineer, you know, um, civil engineers, highway engineers, architects, planners, everybody to actually see what this potential is because we don't have enough good new build examples in housing schemes to actually get it through from, yes, the really good quality ones who embrace it to those at the, at the other end of the scale. But if you go to Wales, we're seeing this being rolled out for all new social housing. And if it can be done there, it can be done anywhere. Why not? We just need those example, exemplars. So yes, we can have lovely retrofit schemes. We need them, we want them. It's making our high streets, and a really important thing that, you know, revitalization of the high streets, making our high streets nicer places to be with good quality urban design of which SUDs can play a part. And we can take other bigger schemes where, you know, in this instance in Sheffield, things have changed and nobody needs this massive highway anymore and turning it into something that actually delivers infrastructure, transport, cycle routes, places for people, places for people to walk to work, taking detours to actually come down here and come and sit here in their lunch hour and actually enjoy being in the urban environment because all of this is suds, but it's green infrastructure, it's linear corridors, it's nature and biodiversity coming together in an intelligent and creative way. Or we can just have the odd urban square in place where actually the suds feature is really just an ornamental thing. I'm very sad to say that I can't show you lots of lovely new housing schemes where this has been done really well because it's really hard to find them. And that I think is very sad. And that for me is the big challenge for where we go with this whole new concept of how we want to design our places, but we must do it by integrating water management. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. I think SATs are really, they, they are almost the testing case of how well and multidisciplinary that team was that worked on these schemes. Because I think, I mean, maybe other some areas, but I think SATs is probably the one 
one area where you need the landscape designer, the ecologist, the drainage engineer, absolutely everybody pulling together in the same direction. Yeah, completely. Probably more so than many of the other areas. And I think it's a real test whether the team collaborated and worked together and whether they didn't. Um, and what, one day I dream of a document which actually, you know, has all the different professions working with it together, writing it together. But maybe our, our urban environment is too complex to actually bring it all into one document. But I think, I mean, maybe, and that's probably a question for the audience, is the design code um, written mostly for planners and designers and not so much for the engineers. Will engineers actually look at this document and is it relevant for them and the ecologists? So who's the target audience of this code and maybe it needs to be widened out. That's a question for everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, 